Hey Choppers, we're here today to show you how to play Penny Lane by Steamworks. It's for two to five players, it's a worker placement game, and it's in the same vein as, as Mintworks and, um, and Mint Delivery, because uh, Justin Blasky is one of the co-designers. So it is for two to five players, where the rule book, people have been kind of like, eh, about it. So we're going to show you how to play, so let's go ahead and get it to the table. To get started, we see here everything that comes with Penny Lane, um, other than the cups, obviously, it's just the pieces in the cups, the cups are my own, but um, we have the, the rule book, which is a little kind of like, eh, so, so we're going to show you um, how to play the game ourselves, yeah, because the rule book, uh, a lot of people had some complaints about it, so we're just going to go through all the pieces of the game and everything, so we'll just toss this to the side right now. So you have your blue citizen meeples, a lot of those, and then you have a bunch of your, your pennies for the game. You also have the purple mayor meeple, which will uh, designate first player, and you have five stars, because again, for two to five players, these are used to keep track of victory points on your player board. For this have a play, we're going to set it up like we're playing a two-player game between myself and you. So we'll go ahead and get rid of uh, some of the stuff that we're not going to need right now, and we'll show you how to get this set up for a game. To start out, we lay out the eight main street cards here, and we make sure that they're on the side for the amount of players we have, because some of them have two to three players, some of them have four to five players, so we make sure the proper sides are face up for the amount of players. Then we each take one of the player boards which has our victory point track at the top and has two sides of the street like uh the left side right side however you, you want to count them this player board shows that during the upkeep phase if there is no blue citizen meeple here you will be able to put one there and also that you will gain a penny during the upkeep phase there are sides little pips that are on the sides half things of pennies you can see here we have a uh, half a penny there half a penny there and then we also have a um, half of a victory point star on each side as we build our own lanes we will have cards that will go on the sides of our player boards to build out our lane and if we happen to build a complete one of these either pennies or victory points we will be able to uh, acquire them victory points we would automatically add to our uh, tracker up here and pennies uh, they will happen whenever uh, the upkeep phase happens and we gain pennies here if we have any completed pennies on our player board we will get those also once you have the main street laid out and we'll go over these cards in a minute and everybody has their own player board each player takes one of the stars to count on their victory tracker and puts it to the side you decide which player is going to go first and they get the mayor meeple i'll assume that I go first and then each player takes three pennies to start out with I've got the little tubs to the side right here once that is done you will shuffle up the deck of building cards here and turn out a row of five of them so let me give these a quick shuffle and we'll go ahead and put them here and turn out five and we'll be able to buy these during the game so there's the five here. There are four different type of building cards that are designated by the symbols next to their name. And you see the house symbol there is for housing. You have the shop, attractions, and workshops right there. We'll get a little bit into the building card explanations in a minute, but basically you're ready to go right now at the beginning of the game, once you've got everything set up like so. So starting off the turn, there are two phases. There's the action phase and then the upkeep phase. So starting in the action phase, the first player, designated by the mayor, will take either a main street action or pass and then the next player will do the same either take a main street action or pass when you take a main street action you take one or more of your pennies depending on which main street action you would like to do and you place them on the appropriate spots you can see here with the town hall you would place one penny and then you would take the mayor token and acquire a penny from the uh from the the pile over there if you take the bank 
option, and some of them have them like this. It has a special symbol designated in the first spot, which shows you get something extra. Usually you would only gain two pennies for one penny put there, but if you get it in the special first spot, you get to gain an extra penny. Another one that has it like that is also gaining a building from the supply. The supply is the line over here of five cards we turned out from the building deck. You, if you are the first one to pay for your building there, you will get to pay one less and everybody else would have to pay the full amount. The cost of the building is to the left of the title of the building. As you can see right here, this, uh, this cinema right here costs five. But if you were the first one to pay for it, in the town action there, the main street action there, you would only pay four if you were the first one. There is the black market, which for three pennies you can blind draw from the top of the building deck. There is the tower, which um, you can pay one to swap any two buildings in your city and their spots. And there's also the gazette, where you can move a citizen from an open job or to onto an open job and we'll explain what that means here in a minute we'll get to these last two main street actions in a minute just want to cover some of the building cards uh, the types of building cards you can get um the cottage right here, you can see if you choose to build this from the supply, you see it's got a blue meeple there. That's a citizen meeple. Whenever you place this card on your lane, you will automatically place one of the blue meeple citizen tokens on top of it. And whenever you take that gazette action to pay two to move a citizen onto an open job, you can take it from there and it reveals a victory point underneath of it so you will automatically then gain that victory point but you will be able to place your blue meeple into a spot such as the temple or barracks which have open job qualifications like so they're just an outline of a meeple in white and there will be some that are on the buildings in your town also that you'll be able to place that meeple at to do a job such as the cobbler here you can see it's got an open position there. And it says that it's worth one victory point for every two houses on your lane if this job is filled. And it's got the little housing symbol there. So it, if you put a meeple there, citizen meeple, it is worth victory points for you. There are also other ones like the mask shop, which have open positions and you can see it's two of them here and they tell you that during the upkeep you gain one penny per employee that is on this card right here so that's would be two pennies during upkeep that you could possibly possibly get there's also cards that are just worth flat victory points when you build them in your city on your lane you will get two victory points like so so let me go ahead and put this aside and i will show you how the turn structure goes. Oh, also, also, now we'll get to those last two ones. The temple here lets you, whenever you put a blue meeple there, you choose any lane and you gain one penny for each housing card that is on that lane. And you can choose any player's lane, not just your own lane. Subsequently, the barracks ca card is the exact same. You choose any lane, you'll gain one penny for any store workshop or attraction card that is on that lane and it doesn't have to be your lane it can be any lane so that is the action phase using one of your main streets here by spending your pennies after each player has passed during the action phase then it goes to the upkeep phase upkeep phase any pennies that are on the main street cards or meeples that are citizens that are on these last two cards they come off and go back to the supply and then you get paid out but before that at the beginning of the upkeep you check and see if any player has 10 victory points at the beginning of the upkeep if they do then it triggers end game scoring if not you clear everything off and then you would generate a blue meeple, if this spot on your board is empty, you would put a blue citizen meeple in just that one spot because it has the, the rotating circular symbol there, meaning upkeep. And then you would generate any pennies, one from the generation one there, and then any that are on your card that are completed. 
So let's go ahead and see how this plays. We'll go ahead and start a game with me starting since I have the mayor token here. So it's the beginning of the action phase. I will take one of my pennies and put it here on the bank and I will get the gain two, but since I'm in that special spot, I get an extra one. So I gain three pennies for myself right there. Since I've done an action, it passes over to you. So you get to choose to do an action. Let's go say you follow me. You put it there. You're only going to gain two pennies, not the three, because you didn't get the first spot. You still have four pennies, which is a, it's a good amount of pennies right there. It passes back over to me. Let's say I want to make sure that I'm going to stay mayor next turn. So I'm going to put that there, which makes me become the mayor, and I get to gain a penny back. But I'm keeping this here, so I'll be mayor next turn also. Let's pass it back to you, and you can look at the cards here. These cottages only cost one. So let's go ahead and um, pay right here. You gain a building from the supply right here, pay, but it's a minimum of one. Even though you're using that first spot, it still have to pay a minimum of one. So let's go ahead and choose the cottage right here. It's going to get a blue meeple put on it, but it's got the penny symbol here on the side. So we're going to go ahead and line it up with that penny on this side of your lane. So during upkeep, you will earn an extra penny. We'll move these to the side right here. And then the supply gets refilled right there. And that blue meeple gets put on there. So it passes back over to me. I don't want to be left out. I want to make sure I get some of these. I'm, I'm looking at this haunted house right here. It's worth a victory point for each adjacent building with no citizens on them. It costs two. So I'm going to go ahead and put those two right here on the Mason's Guild. Grab that haunted house and see where I can put it on my lane that would be advantageous. Uh, if I put it over here, it's going to line up with a victory point and a, pen and a penny. I'll have half and half and won't. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on this side over here. And then I'll build some adjacent buildings on it that way to make some more victory points and such. So play passes back over to you. We only got one more builder spot. But you've actually got a meeple now that you can move somewhere to an adjacent spot. It's not really good to do these now. You won't really get that many pennies. Um, but you can, if you want to. Let's go ahead and say you're just going to buy another, another one of those cottages for one. So pop that there. Go ahead and buy. Which one would be best to buy for your street? Um, none of them are going to line up with this penny symbol here. Um, let's go ahead and build that one right next to that other cottage over there. And we'll flip out another card. Put your meeple there for you. And it'll uh, pass back over to me. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and blind draw. I'm going to spend three pennies right here on the black market. I'm going to blind draw and see what I get. Oh, I got a manor house. It's worth, uh, worth victory points per uh, workshop on my lane. Uh, and it counts as a house, and it has a meeple on it. So let's see, where can I put this that will be uh, advantageous? Oh, I can put it right here next to my haunted house, and that gives me a penny starting right there. Yeah, awesome. Let's go ahead and uh, pass back to you. Let's say that you uh, you go ahead and say pass. You don't want to spend any more pennies. So it comes back to me. I'll, I'll say pass also. I don't have any more pennies to spend. So now it starts upkeep. We check. Neither one of us have... 10 victory points so all this stuff comes off and goes back to the supply over here boom 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 up keep up keep up keep we both get a blue meeple in our spot on our main part of our lane right there penny or er, meeple meeple and then we go ahead you're going to gain one penny plus you have one completed penny right there you don't have any other completed pennies on there so you will earn two pennies during upkeep Boom, boom. And I get to, uh, oh, I forgot to put a blue meeple on this one if I acquired the manor right there. Sorry, like that. Um, I acquire one and one right here. So I get two pennies myself. And one thing I forgot to do, or that I haven't done yet, is the haunted house is worth a victory point for each adjacent building with no citizens on them. So let's see if I can figure that out, how I can do that this turn. Let's say, okay, I'll keep is over. We all have our pennies and our uh, our meeples on our stuff. So we'll go ahead and go back. And since I'm mayor, I will get to go first. And let's say I'm going to go, I am going to use the Gazette right here to move a citizen into an open job. I could pay one 
more to move a second citizen if I wanted to. But I've only got the, I got the one. I've only got two pennies anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and place them here to move my citizen meeple from my manor. Move it over here to the temple. So now this will let me choose any lane and I gain one penny for each housing on that lane. I'm going to choose my lane. I have a housing building here, a housing building here. So I will earn two pennies automatically for placing that meeple there. But also, now my haunted house has an adjacent building next to it. So that earns me one victory point right away. And then this blue citizen meeple came off and earns me another victory point because of the symbol underneath right there. And then I would pass my turn over to you and you, let's say, you go ahead and put one penny here so that you get three pennies right there and start earning up some more pennies there. Passes back over to me. I'm going to do the same thing, only I get two for being in the secondary spot. And then we keep going back and forth just like that. Let's say you wanted to pay to move your meeple into a spot over here, like here, to try to get some more stuff, although I don't think it would get you anything. Uh, that would not be a good move. But back and forth until somebody has 10 victory points. When they do, that triggers endgame, and whoever has the most victory points wins. So I hope you enjoyed our How to Play of Penny Lane. We'll see you next time. I'm Logan for Logan Chops Reviews How to Plays, and uh, happy gaming, as always.